Hello and welcome back to my kitchen again. This is kind of an impromptu video, but I was going to make some of our fried cornbread and I thought I'd go ahead and turn the camera on, show y'all another one of our favorite things. Now, all my life, Mama made this and y'all probably call it hot water cornbread, but Mother always called it squeezy cornbread. So that name has stuck in our family and I'll, I'll show you why we called it that in a minute. In my bowl, I have one cup of cornmeal, a half a cup of flour, a teaspoon of pink Himalayan salt, two tablespoons of onion powder, and about a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Now that's all you need. You just stir that up to where it will uh, be blended pretty good. And then you add boiling water. Now I've measured out a cup and a half I'm going to put about a cup in, and if I need that other half, I'll add it. But you just want a very thick, pasty dough. That's about another fourth. I think that's going to be about right. One and a fourth of boiling water. I got it out of my little electric tea kettle over there, or water kettle, or whatever you call it. Okay, that's what it looks like. That's the consistency you want, okay? Now I've got my grease getting hot, and you want your grease real hot, kind of like if you were frying fish. And this is the reason that we called it squeezy cornbread. Now this water right here is simply to keep that hot stuff from cooking my hands when I make my little corn pone. But you take a little piece of it, and you roll it and make you a little cylinder. And then, when, see, Mama would squeeze it, and it would have little fingerprints on it. Can you see that? That's why it's called squeezy cornbread. Now, let me drop a little piece in the grease. It's not quite hot enough yet, so I'll just make a few more corn pones while I'm waiting on my grease to heat up. Now, if my whole bunch was here, I would make about three times this much, because they love it. But today, it's my daughter and my husband and myself, so I just made a little bit, uh, a little bit. I cooked a pot of pinto beans. Now, the way I do my pinto beans, I'll tell you, I'm going to cook some on camera one day. But I always fry some bacon up real crisp, and um, then I add my water, or if you want to use broth, you can. I usually just use water in them, and um, some garlic and onion powder and salt and boil them for about, simmer them for about two and a half hours and they are good. Kind of like charro beans at the Mexican place. Now my daughter is here today, so mama didn't put any onions in it. Normally I would have some onions and some cilantro and some chili peppers, but I did it for my baby girl. She'll always be my baby. She came for us to, uh, do her some strawberries on the freeze dryer. So we've got them going. And about 50 hours from now, she'll come back and get them. They had a good sale on strawberries. Okay, my squeezy cornbread is going to go into this grease. You can... And you just want to put it in there until it, you know, it browns on each side, kind of like you'd want your cornbread to be. Those down there in the bottom might have had a little bit too much water on them. The hot water kind of cooks the cornmeal mixture to start with. Okay, I'll let them in there until they uh, get brown, and I'll show you about how brown we get them. And I'm going to... Um, Put them out on a plate with paper towel to absorb some of the oil, and then we're going to enjoy beans and cornbread here in a minute at our house. Okay, they're getting brown on one side, so I'm just flipping them over where they'll brown on the other. Doesn't take very long, and you'll have good squeezy cornbread to go with your beans or cabbage or greens or whatever. Now you can cut minced onion up and you're going to want to mince it little bitty and put in there. 
and it makes them sort of like a hush puppy flavor. But again, everybody at my house don't like onions, so I generally leave it out. But my mama used to have a garage sale every spring. And she would, uh, there was two or three friends that would join in. Carlin, if you're watching, you'll remember. And her meal for us was red beans and her coleslaw, which I'm going to make before long and show y'all. It's my husband's favorite. And um, I've already made one, but it was a sweeter one. Mama's wasn't sweet. And then the squeezy cornbread. So we would have beans and rice and coleslaw and squeezy cornbread. And so, you know, everybody wanted in on the garage sale so they could eat lunch at my mama's house. So that's, that's the story about the squeezy cornbread. I'll uh, get a piece out here in just a minute and break it open and show y'all what it looks like. And I can taste of it, but y'all won't know what it tastes like. You have to take my word for it. But we'll do that in just a minute. In fact, let me see if one of them's getting brown enough. I like them pretty brown. I'd rather they brown just a little bit more. Sometimes I'll flip them from and make them brown some more, but they're done. So I'm going to go ahead and take it up where I can uh, show y'all what they look like on the inside. Ooh, they sop up the green juice from turnip greens, and they sop up the bean juice from the pinto beans, and they just they're just good, good by itself too. And if you like ketchup much as I do. They're good dunked in some ketchup. Better than a french fry. Okay, here you go. That's what it looks like in its hottest blazes, but I'm going to break one open. Can you just imagine what that tastes like? I wish y'all was here with me. I'd feed you some. But for right now, you just have to take my word for it. Thank you for watching the video. And y'all come back again real soon. We'll have some more good recipes from my growing up. And um, y'all can share them with your family. Have a blessed day.